Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. Every once in a while, it's good to take our minds off actually what's going on in the world and take a step back to think about how has this all come to be, you know? So, what this video here is going to be about is comparing two theories um, pertaining to how the world has worked leading up to today, right? And these are catastrophism and uniformitarianism. Now, catastrophism, you can probably tell, comes from the word catastrophe, and uniformitarianism, uniformitarianism comes from the word uniform. So, right off the bat, you should be able to get a good idea of what these theories may, um, in general, be about. But, I'd like to start off with a, just a, a, um, a bit of an analogy to look at as far as what these theories say. So let's say we've got a mountain here. Actually, let's say this isn't a mountain, this is just a, a mass of land that's been pushed upwards by two colliding uh, plates at a convergent plate boundary, right? Two continental plates collide, the land is pushed upwards, and uh, we get this, maybe not a mountain yet, but this, uh, this upward bulge in the Earth. Now, these things we know to be true if we accept the theory of plate tectonics to be correct, but when we put into question whether catastrophism or uniformitarianism would be applied is when we ask the question of what happens to this bulge from here on out. So let's say this is going to become a mountain range, and in the end it looks something... Let's say the base stays the same, but let's say erosion occurs and we get all sorts of little rifts in here, and, you know, different surfaces ex experience different amounts of erosion. And we just get, you know, and maybe this is a 3D object, so there's some further back. You know, maybe some, some nice little mountains there, maybe put some snow on the top. Because why not? Um, so we've got this group of mountains, this mountain range here. And the question is, how did this come to be from that initial bulge that we created in the Earth at our tectonic plate boundary? Well, a good way to think about this and contrast the two theories here is that uniformitarianism would say that, well, gradual erosion occurred, uh, chemical and physical weathering, um, some rain here and there, uh, maybe some wind blew it, um, sediments were broken off of it, and over a very long period of time, we had the formation of this mountain range here by erosion, right? That's what uniformitarianism is called, it would say, and for that same reason, sometimes it's called gradualism. Of course, coming from the word gradual, which means a very slow change. Meanwhile, catastrophism would say that this mountain range was formed, not only was the initial mountain range formed by a sudden push upwards in the earth at the colliding plate boundary, but also that the erosion occurred very rapidly due to a catastrophe of sorts, a natural disaster, maybe a massive flood that wiped through this mountain range or that went across the initial surface and caused massive amounts of erosion at once, scraping off tons of sediment and creating all these different rifts and valleys and peaks within this mountain range. Maybe that wasn't just one flood, but maybe a couple throughout the geologic history of Earth have created this amount of erosion. So that's just sort of the theory of how a mountain would be formed with these two. So as you can probably gather just from that example, catastrophism is the theory that the Earth has undergone throughout its history. Basically, almost all significant change that has occurred has been through sudden catastrophes. Um, the Earth that we see today has been a result of a very uneven, very fractured geologic history of periods of sudden change, uh, floods, um, uh, glacial movement, uh, earthquakes, things like that that have all shaped the way our planet is. A series of catastrophes really going back to the, to the root of the word. Uniformitarianism, on the other hand, states that all of the processes that have that we see going on in the Earth today, and we see them shaping the Earth at a relatively slow rate, those processes, such as the, um, the gradual moving of tectonic plates, the relatively slow weathering of sedimentary rocks, that sort of stuff, that's all been going on since the very beginning of the Earth's formation. Um, and it's continued to occur. And because of that, all change that has occurred to the Earth 
has been very slow. So just to sort of summarize these, catastrophism is sudden rapid change. and there has been no particular pattern. Uniformitarianism, on the other hand, would say that the change is very gradual, and there is a pattern in that it just, it, un, it goes, it repeats the same sort of stuff over and over again, or um, there's a uniformity to what's been going on. The same processes have been occurring over and over um, at relatively constant rates. So one of the key differences that we see when we talk about this theory is, well, if, catastroph if catastrophism states that there's been sudden rapid changes following no particular pattern, then how would the geologic history of the Earth look, right? If we are assuming that there have just been a bunch of rapid little changes over and over again, not following any particular pattern, but different ones occurring at different times, then the Earth's geologic history would be much shorter than that that uniformitarianism suggests, which says that we just have these processes going and repeating themselves over and over and over again over the course of billions of years until we get to where we are today. And that's a key point here. A little analogy I like to think of when talking about this is a wave analogy. If we want to go into physics here, let's say we've got two different waves here, and they're each dissipating the amount of energy required to get to the Earth, to get the Earth to where it is today. Let's say that the energy in this case is representative of the total amount of changes that have occurred to the Earth, right? So if we've just got two waves sort of here, if we want to graph them out, then I'll make this one representing uniformitarianism and this one catastrophism. So the uniformitarianism wave would look something like this. Maybe one wavelength, a very small uh, amplitude here, relatively long wavelengths. And then we would just see this repeat over and over again. over time until the total net energy dissipated. Uh, for example, if the energy is um, proportional to the amplitude of these waves, thinking back to physics, then we would say that, okay, after a certain amount of time, the energy that we have accumulated would be equal to the net amount of change that has occurred to the Earth in order to get it to today. So let's just say this is at time t where the Earth is today, and we'll call this a zero. Meanwhile, catastrophism would say it's more like this. Much higher energy events, and they're occurring uh, very rapidly, very sudden changes uh, between the sort of crests and troughs you see here, each representing a different catastrophe, and for that reason, the time required for the energy or the amount of change that we see on the Earth is much shorter under this theory. So we get something that looks more like this, about half as long as the sort of wave I've created for uniformitarianism. So that's just not another way of thinking about it. And when we look at it this way, um, since uniformitarianism implies the geologic history of the Earth is much longer, this is generally much more accepted. Um, since we know the Earth is between 4 and 5 billion years old. Now, that does not rule catastrophism out of the picture, because um, many geologists they have sort of come to a happy medium between the two, which states that, in general, we've been following the same pattern, but we've had little ruptures in this pattern uh, that we see in things like mass extinctions. The KT extinction, for example, um, would represent a sudden break in the pattern that represents massive change, um, not just in the geology, but in the, in the life on Earth, um, Things like uh, the ice ages would represent massive changes in the Earth all of a sudden. Uh, you know, certain there have been certain influences that break the overall uniform pattern. Um, 
So there's been no theory, no real sort of mega theory, if you want to call that, that has combined these two. But in general, geologists accept that, for the most part, the Earth follows a uniform pattern with uh, little ruptures in between that might indicate where um, catastrophism theory was coming from. But that's about all I wanted to talk about for today. Just some interesting stuff to think about. It's nice to think that not everything we do is applied science or doing things on maps, but there also is some chance to really think deeply about what we're doing and why um, we're doing what we're doing, because really, the Earth and the way it's formed defines the way we think of it today. But, anyways, I'm just rambling at this point. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully it was informative. Otherwise, good review. And I will see you all in the next video. Ciao. Pretty quickly, you can see this is a steeply sloping surface right here. That's about a quarter of an inch, or about, about an eighth of 500, which is about, oh geez, 70-ish.